Good afternoon and welcome to this meeting of the Mid Suffolk Planning Referrals Committee. My name is Claire Philpott and I'm the Governance Officer for this meeting. The first item of business will be the election of a chair for the meeting. Members are asked to note that should the vote be drawn there will be no casting vote and the vote will be taken again until the chair is elected. Please could I ask for nominations for a chair? Councillor Matheson. I nominate Councillor Stringer. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Councillor, I think Councillor Mayer was, did you have your? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to nominate Councillor Muller. Can I have a seconder for Councillor Stringer first, please? Councillor Warboys, and a seconder for Councillor Muller. Thank you, Councillor Mayer. So if we do these by a show of hands, so can I have a show of hands for Councillor Stringer, please? One, two, three, four, thank you. And can I have a show of hands for Councillor Muller, please? One, two, three, four, five. five. I make that five for Councillor Muller, therefore Councillor Muller will take the chair for the meeting. Thank you. We'll have a short break while we swap seats. Thank you. May I first of all remind you of some domestic arrangements. Please ensure that microphones are turned off when not in use. Please do not interrupt other speakers or hold separate conversations whilst others are speaking. If you are attending the meeting to speak and persistently interrupt the meeting, you may be asked to leave. Please ensure your mobile phones are on silent or switched off and that your laptops are switched to silent. We will be using e-voting for this meeting on the modern.gov app, so please could members make sure they are logged in and ready to use the app. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. The whole of the meeting will be recorded except where there are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation to the meeting, you will be deemed by the council to have consented to being recorded. By entering this meeting as a speaker, you are also consenting to being recorded by the Council and to the possible use of those sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. The Council, members of the public and the press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and the press are not lawfully excluded. If you hear the alarm, leave the building immediately via a fire exit and make your way to the assembly point, which is Ipswich Town Football Ground. Follow the signs directing you to the fire exits at each end of the floor. Do not enter the atrium, rain floor area and walkways. If you are in the atrium at the time of the alarm, follow the signs to the nearest fire exit. Use the stairs, not the lifts. Do not re-enter the building and told it is safe to do so. 
I'd like to make some introductions. We have the Chief Planning Officer, Mr. Philip Isbell. The Strategic Projects and Delivery Manager is not here. Uh, legal Advisor, Mr. Ian uh, Duprez. Case Officer, Mr. Vincent Pierce. And the Governance Officers, Claire Field Philpott and Alicia Norman. We have the ward members here also, Councillor Davis and Councillor Richardson. Can I move to the agenda, please? Item one, uh, apologies for absence and substitutions, please. Thank you, Chair. We have apologies from Councillor Field, Councillor Hicks, Councillor Humphreys, Councillor Gould, Councillor Guthrie, Councillor Norris and Councillor Passmore. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Item two, to, to receive declarations of disclosable pecuniary interests and other registrable or non-registrable interests by members. Are there any to declare, please? None. Okay. Declarations of lobbying. No. Okay. Uh, declarations of personal site visits. No. Okay. Right. Item five. Confirmation of the minutes of the meeting held on the 27th of January 2021. Are there any points regarding the accuracy of the minutes? Uh, could I have a proposer and a seconder, please? Councillor Caston and Councillor Matheson, thank you. And the Governance Officer will now conduct the electronic vote. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Members, that vote is now in progress. Um, Councillor Stringer, can I take your vote, please? Four, please. Thank you. Thank you, members. Chair, that's nine votes for. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Item six, to confirm the minutes, confirmation of the minutes held on the 19th of March 2021. Are there any points regarding accuracy of the minutes? If not, could I have a proposer and a seconder, please? Councillor Mayor and Councillor Mayor uh, Mansell was second. Thank you. And I'd now like to re ask the Governance Officer to conduct the electronic vote, please. Thank you, Chair. Members, that vote is in progress. Councillor Stringer? Thank you. Thank you, Members Chair. That is nine votes for, so that again is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 7, to receive notification of petitions in accordance with the Council's petition scheme. None received, Chair. Uh... Thank you very much. Therefore, we move to item 8, which is the schedule of planning applications, and item 8A, which is DC 19-020-90, land to the east of Ixworth Road, Thurston, Suffolk. And I would now like to invite the case officer, Vincent Pearce, to introduce the application to the committee. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, members, guests, and anyone who may be watching or listening to this online. As you will see from my report, this is an application that members first considered back in uh, 2020. The application site itself is shown on the screen in flashing red. It's north of Norton Road and to the northeast of the Thurston Community College. You'll notice from the screen that there are a number of sites around it which are currently being developed. Um, the Persimmon Homes one is under construction, as is the Linden Homes one. The Lawrence Homes one is not so advanced. As I say, back in 2020, the committee considered this three times, ending up in September 2020 with a resolution to grant planning permission, outline planning permission for 210 dwellings subject to a 106 agreement. That 106 was drafted and does exist. However, that decision was not issued on the basis that we'd had indication that were the permission to be issued it would be likely to be challenged by Thurston Parish Council. 
on a point of law, and as members will recall, we already had a JR challenge in respect of the Baton Road application, also in Thurston. Since you last considered the application, we believe as officers there has been a material change in circumstance, which means it is right and proper to bring this application back to committee because the, issue, the decision was not issued and therefore the council is still in the position to determine that application. However, we have now received an appeal or notification of an appeal against non-determination. Gladman, the applicants, have decided to appeal on the basis that the council has not decided the application. So what I'm going to be doing this afternoon is describing the scheme and then recommending that had an appeal not been lodged, this council would have refused the application on the basis of the material change in circumstance since September 2020. So as officers, we've completely reversed our previous recommendation and we are now recommending refusal. The two chief changes in material circumstances are that at the time you considered this previously, the JLP joint local plan was proceeding and we advised you that it represented the direction of travel of the council in terms of allocations, particularly in Thurston, even though in itself it carried little weight as a material planning consideration. So I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail shortly, but at the time, the council was intending to allocate this site for housing. Because part two of the joint local plan is now no longer proceeding, the council's only proceeding with part one, all those allocations have effectively now been dropped and we are relying on allocations within the adopted local plan. Within the adopted local plan, this site is not allocated for development. It is, in fact, countryside. The other material change in circumstance, members will recall way back um, 2020, 2019, 2018, there was a lot of concern the council was its five-year housing land supply position was at times precarious. We now find ourselves uh, several years later in a position where we can demonstrate that we now have a 10.88 year housing land supply. On that basis, we do not feel that there is an overriding need to support additional housing where it's contrary to policy. And I will go into a little bit more detail as we go through the presentation. So that's the order of the headline changes. And that's why we're here this afternoon reviewing the position and as officers providing you with a revised planning balance and conclusion in the report. Previously, we looked at a, a, a lot of um, elements of the scheme. In my presentation this afternoon, I will describe them, but as officers, we are not going to contradict what we said about the benefits of the scheme uh, as previously described. So we are literally going to look at how the material change in circumstance has affected our recommendation to you. As always, this presentation is merely meant to supplement the detail in the report. It is a very detailed report. Just to remind members, Thurston is a key service centre in the uh, adopted local plan, and it is a site, a location where we expect development, the majority of development, to be directed in terms of our settlement hierarchy. Here we have an extract from the Thurston inset from the adopted development plan. You'll notice that the yellow star, which indicates the position of the site, is outside of the defined settlement boundary that appears in your adopted development plan. Similarly, obviously we have a, an adopted neighbourhood development plan in Thurston that includes a settlement boundary as defined in the neighbourhood plan, which sits thus as in grey. You'll notice again that the 
application site is outside of the settlement boundary for Thurston as defined in the adopted neighbourhood plan. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's just take a sip. On the screen is a, a plan that I presented last time, an extract from the joint local plan, and you'll see in green LA089, which is the application site, was potentially allocated for housing development. That no longer exists. There is no such allocation. That has now been dropped. Along with that being dropped is the actual text that underpinned that allocation, which identified the site as suitable for approximately 200 dwellings. That also has been withdrawn. The site therefore remains countryside in accordance with your adopted development plan. As local authorities, all local authorities attempt to be at least to be able to demonstrate they have a five year housing land supply. We're in the fortunate position in mid Suffolk of having a 10.88 year supply. So we have significant availability and that is likely to be able to take us to the end of or very close to the end of the present review local plan period of 2036. Just, just to remind councillors, this is uh, an indication of the development that has already been approved in Thurston and these sites constitute what is colloquially known as the Thurston 5. That adds up to 818 dwellings north and just a little bit to the south of Norton Road, but if effectively North Thurston is in the process of receiving 818 dwellings. All of those have permission and have been identified in the neighbourhood plan. And you'll notice that the, if you could remember the previous plan from the neighbourhood plan itself, the settlement boundary was extended in the neighbourhood plan to encompass those sites, but the site with the red star i.e. the application site, was not included. We now have it confirmed that outline planning permission also now lawfully exists on the Baton Road site, so that's an additional 210 dwellings in Thurston. So that brings us up to 1,000 in Thurston, and we have the extra care unit on Heath Road, which is an additional 54 units. I'm sure we will hear representations from the Parish Council. Um, but I'm sure it's their, their belief that uh, over a thousand properties, Thurston has actually contributed significantly to satisfying demand across the district in terms of the current plan period. So the flashing yellow sites are the sites that are well under construction. Um, the orange dotted site is the Lawrence Holmes site which has yet to make a big impact in terms of progress and Baton Road we have the reserved matters uh, application that is likely to come to committee on the 15th of March and that will be going to committee A and that's the reserved matters details for 210 dwellings and that was the case that was subject to the JR challenge. So in terms of proposed access let's orientate ourselves. We've got Ixworth Road on the left and uh, Norton Road off the screen uh, and Meadow Lane on the right. So the site sits in between those two sections of highway. Let's see if we can... Here we go. The main access will be at the southern end at this point with an emergency access for uh, fire, ambulance, police, etc. At, at the northern end and it is laid out in a series of perimeter blocks. This layout changed throughout the lifetime of the application because what we wanted to do was to secure stronger green links across the site. So that photograph is taken at that vehicular access point looking east across this farmland. So the application site sits in, in here as you can see from the, the inset on the left. 
what we have secured. Bear in mind that north is now to the right of that, so I've turned it through 90 degrees to show you the visibility display that is required. And behind that will be a 20 meter deep landscape buffer were this to be approved. So in terms of what that would look like viewed from the air, just to give you a better idea, we have the rugby club down here. This frontage along here would be dense planting at the moment. The site, edge of the site is characterized really by removed hedgerow. There are the odd little groupings, a few occasional single trees, but most of the hedgerow that would have lined this Ixworth Road have been removed. Again, at, at that entrance, there will be footway cycleway connections um, to the crossing point shown here. Members may recall that the persimmon site, which is in here, has already now provided a three meter wide footway cycleway that goes right down to the community college. So this site would plug into that evolving network. Oh. Oh, cool. Okay. Sorry, bye. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor. Apologies. Should I go back one slide and rejiggle my mouse? Because I, I, I wouldn't want anyone to feel. Yeah. So, again, here we are at the southern access. There will be sections of three meter wide footway cycleway installed at the crossing point here, which would then plug into a three meter wide footway cycleway that has been provided by Persimmon. It would go right the way down into the village itself to the community college on the corner. So this would be plugged into an evolving network of cycleway systems in Thurston. So effectively, on this screen, you would be able to go from that crossing, the footway cycle, right the way down to the college. And you'll remember that uh, Thurston is particularly well provided with a cycle network as uh, National Cycle Route 51 does go through the village. A standout feature of the scheme that we presented last time was this large area of open space which has been secured for members to approve this the scheme, which we're now not recommending, but I do need to uh, identify the benefits. This would be transferred to the council for a pound and potentially would offer all kinds of um, facilities for the village. So that's the area of open space within this scheme, which, in a, which would actually sit adjacent to another large area of open space, which is secured in the Linden Home schemes on the adjoining site to the east. So again, that potentially offers a, a buffer between urban development and the countryside beyond. At the time, we also secured a 20 meter wide buffer on the eastern edge of the site along Meadow Lane at the uh, request, specific request of the committee in order to ensure that the character of Meadow Lane remained highly countryfied and that the impact of urban development was not able to make a strong presence on that, that route. So all four edges of the site would be heavily landscaped with species that you would expect to find in the countryside, indigenous species. As you can see, the southern boundary also has a, a similar treatment. You can see the east-west corridor, and these are actual speed, speed tables. So pedestrians would go through this green corridor on, and have points of crossing over the internal estate road system. 
there'd also be access, pedestrian access, into Meadow Lane itself from this network. In terms of recreation, the 106 secures a £200,000 contribution um, to be used in the first instance to provide facilities within that area of open space. And at the time, there was a lot of discussion around could that be used for wheel play, uh, skate park, BMX, etc. And the site itself would lend itself to that sort of use. So secured as part of the illustrative layout and by condition is this internal circular route that would only have one road crossing it. So we thought this could easily provide some sort of jogging trail, dog walking trail, etc. If you then put a, some loops in, you could actually get around the entire estate and back without having to cross, cross a road. You just loop back and do a turn. This is the area where we potentially thought skate park activity may be possible. It is a an objective in the neighbourhood plan to secure a skate park and the parish council would look to a number of sites in Thurston. Some of those are still under discussion. This potentially offered an alternative to those sites. Uh, sorry. Sorry, I should be sitting the other way. Let's go quickly back then. So, this is the only point at which the circular route would have to cross a road. So with these loops at either end, you could actually go around the entire estate, turn back, and just do continuous, pedestrian-friendly, healthy activity, jogging, walking, dog walking. This is where we thought the best location for skate park type activity would, would be located. As I say, it, it is an objective in the neighbourhood plan to secure those facilities. And what we were looking at at the time is, is a newer idea in skate, skating circles, is the idea of skate dots rather than a single skate park where you have all the facilities. In this uh, setup, you actually have them drawn out in a linear form and you move between the elements and I'll show you a quick diagram. Here we believe there's sufficient distance from the residential properties to provide socially friendly um, juxtaposition so the skate borders would not annoy the, the residents, but there would still be a high degree of supervision. So on the left you have the more traditional form of skate park, and this is the idea of the skate dots where you move through the landscape in a series of skating activities. Connectivity, let's go back. The site would be highly connected to a number of points around the village, including the station. Included in the scheme, here we have the Ixworth Road, Station Hill, Norton Road junction. So we have the community college over here. Uh, now, the, one of the big issues, if we just see if we can get this to work, is actually the amount of coaches that arrive and leave during the day and the perilous position of pedestrians, largely school children and pupils as they try and cross these little junctions. So let's see if we can get that to work, which we can't for some reason. But you can actually see there is a child standing there. What happens is they cross the road here, and then there's a footpath the other side that leads into part of the residential estate. So they all try and cross at this point, and there's a continuous stream of coaches. And they actually sort of dash out between coaches. As you can see, this coach swings round They've just got to the pavement, and that coach is already quite a way into the junction. That is not an ideal position. It isn't safe. And um, we looked at providing... Oh, there you go. Right. 
right, so let's just... And then my, I think there were probably about 13 coaches when I took this piece of video last time, and it's just a continuous stream. So what we actually have is, these are the footways, and some cycleways, but those uh, young people were trying to cross to get into this footpath system that takes them into this estate. So there's danger at this point and this point. And what we secured as part of this scheme, it says, is a tiger crossing. And a tiger crossing allows cycles and pedestrians to cross at the same time within their own defined strip. So it was a new concept to Mid-Suffolk at the time, and I don't think we've actually secured many since then. So looking at that junction in greater detail, within the 106, there is now a commitment to provide these crossings in this position here. So you can now see how, how much safer that junction would be for pedestrians and cyclists with this in, in place. Also included was a crossing at the Heath Road, Barton Road junction, again, which takes a large number of school children in the morning and obviously in the afternoon when they all go back home. This would be a toucan crossing uh, connected by a three metre wide section of footway cycleway. The site is uh, well connected to the school the new primary school off on the right, and this drink, the community college, and down into Thurston itself and the railway station. Oh, I didn't read my lips then. Um, sorry, councillor. Yeah. So here's the station, here's the site, and down Station Hill there is a, a network of cycle routes already. Here you have the community centre and the large area of open space in the, in the heart of the village. As I said earlier, National Cycle Route 51 does go through Thurston, as you can see, and that's the community college, so the site itself would sit in here and could easily plug into that system. A lot of bus uh, routes, it's, a, it's well served by bus, comparatively speaking, to other rural settlements. And again, it has the advantage of having a railway station, which few villages have in Mid-Suffolk, but members will recall the, the issue we have in Thurston in terms of access to both stations, the down track and the up track. You have to cross the railway lines using a barrow crossing. And that potentially course is not safe. Even though there are klaxons and uh, warning signs, you do have to cross live railway lines with trains running. So at the moment, as the report says, we are exploring with Network Rail, the Parish Council, and our infrastructure team whether there is still money to try and come up with a solution that provided safer access to the westbound platform that didn't involve, or doesn't involve, having to cross those tracks. In a sense, that's outside of this application, but it does give you a little bit more background. The only connection between this application and that potential project is that this would fund £30,000 towards feasibility work on that, that project if it were approved. Again, you can see how the site is located in respect of a number of key destinations within the village. The scheme also would provide a contribution money towards improvements at Bunbury Arms. You recall at the top of Ixworth Road, um, the council is, or the county council is already looking to improve the Bunbury Arms junction using money from the Thurston Five developments. What this scheme potentially was offering was a contribution that would pay for mover software, which wasn't included in the original scheme, and mover software allows traffic lights to be controlled in real time by the queues of traffic at each of those sets of lights. So it's far more uh, responsive to 
flow of traffic where the queues are and can keep traffic moving more freely. That was considered a benefit by the Highway Authority because the original scheme did not and does not include mover. That explains what mover is. These are the junction improvements that have been secured as part of the Bloor scheme at Baton Road. Obviously, were this scheme in North, uh, North Thurston to be approved, it would also take advantage of having those improvements. In terms of residential amenity, we didn't identify any particular problems with the site. Um, there have been uh, well-recorded issues in North Thurston associated with the amount of construction traffic that there is in the area, obviously with uh, four major sites under construction. There is a lot of HGV movement, a lot of the verges have been churned up, there's been a lot of road closures, uh, local people have had to endure a long period of, of inconvenience. That in itself is not a material planning consideration, however locally it is a very uh, controversial point because as we say that's now been going on for some two years. The point that came up last time was what access is there in the village to a GP and the answer at the time and it's still the answer is Thurston does not have its own GP practice. Um, residents either go to Woolpit or to Debenham and what we did um, have was a request from the health provider that were permission to be granted um, still money would be available to expand surgeries at these points. I don't think that has changed unless others say to the, the contrary. In terms of biodiversity, were the scheme to be approved, there would be large areas of new hedgerow, there would be a new wetland area in terms of the suds system and the attenuation pond, new grasslands, a lot of potential for um, biodiversity. Bear in mind at the moment, of course, it is a field. It doesn't have development on it. Um, and all of this biodiversity is only required because of that development. I, unfortunately, I didn't need it at that point. I should, um, moving on. In terms of the 106 that has been secured, we have education contributions worth nearly one and a half million in terms of expanding education provision in the, in the village. We have that transfer of open space for a pound. The £200,000 towards um, open space sport recreation. A cyclist discount contribution of £31,500 which would um, provide residents with discounted deals to purchase cycles, the £30,000 towards station feasibility, and then there's a whole series of other um, benefits. We do get 35% affordable housing. Now the crunch point comes when we look at the balance again, because at the time, as officers, we were pointing out to you, as I said at the start, that this site potentially was going to be allocated for 200 dwellings and the direction of travel was to add more development to, to that which existed in the neighbourhood plan in Thurston. We also pointed out the potentially um, less robust position in terms of the high five-year housing land supply and our balance at the time was because of um, these two factors the balance fell towards approving the development because of the benefits that would be secured through the Section 106 agreement. However, today when we look and we ref reflect on that position and the new position we find ourselves in, I'm for, uh, this is okay, I don't need the, don't need the point for this one. Um, as I said earlier, today that site is not allocated. There are no allocations in Thurston or any part of the district appearing in the joint local plan. So the direct, there is no direction of travel 
towards allocating this site or any other site. Okay, I think the chief planner wants to just pick me I, up. On if, I, if I may intervene, at the moment that's the direction of travel, but until the modifications document okay. to the JLP is published, that's almost the position. Um, but it's not literally true that the plan has been split into two. So the inspectors agree that that's the approach and that's part of the correspondence that has taken place between us and them. It hasn't yet actually formally been done through a modification to the JLP. That is, I believe, to happen soon. And when that happens, obviously that's a consultation, so it's not a done deal. But reading between the lines with everything else, we are almost at that point of it being withdrawn. I'll leave it there, please. Thank you. Okay. I'm grateful to the Chief Planning Officer because, as we found out, these things can uh, lead to all sorts of consequences if I don't accurately describe the position. So I'm grateful to Phil for highlighting the issue. And of course, we now have a nearly an 11 year housing land supply. And our feeling is that has materially shifted that balance. Whilst we've still got this basket of benefits, you may see them as benefits or, or less than a benefit, but at the time we said they were benefits that outweighed the harm. Our position now is that actually the harm to the uh, adopted development plan in terms of development within the countryside when there is no overriding need anymore because we have such a, a strong and robust position in terms of our five-year housing land supply it does tip the balance away from an approval and towards refusal. And that's why in the report we are now recommending that had an appeal not been lodged, this council would have refused the application. A lot has happened in the intervening two and a half years and that materially affects the uh, recommendation that we are now providing. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. We have uh, members' questions, please. Councillor Matheson, then Councillor Mansell. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, page um, 35. Um, oh, yes, thanks for the lights. Um, yeah, I, the, I think it would be helpful to say, you, you did say that the, the five-year land supply position at the time of the original recommendation was precarious. Um, I think if we actually had a date um, at which it became more than five, um, the, 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 that date as compared to the date when we made the, the um, de decision that we made, um, I think that would, that would be very useful. Um, the, the other question um, there's, there's a reference um, on the right, the right page, here we are, page 33. Um, yeah, I wasn't clear. You mentioned finally the Supreme Court in the second paragraph there. I had not heard that uh, the, the Supreme Court had made a decision about this um, um, long-running um, court case. Um, can you clarify what actually happened there? Because I kind of felt as if I would have heard if it had been decided, but um, that, would, that would be helpful. Yep. Um, if I, can I be heard? Um, the Supreme Court have declined to give permission for an appeal. And we... Um, well, I'll ask to to give permission for an appeal from the appeal court. Decision. Yes, um, the way the Supreme Court works is you, you don't, you're not allowed to go there automatically. You have to ask on paper usually for three judges look at it and decide if you you ought to be allowed to have a full hearing in the Supreme Court. And I can probably find it if you, I've got it somewhere because I, I was we, given a copy of it. But if we reference it properly somewhere in our um, decision notice when we get there, I think that would be well quite helpful. Well, that, that forms part of the background to your consideration, but it's, it, it yeah. was the, the Supreme Court declined to give permission, you, as yeah. they very often do. They only, yeah. they only hear a very small minority of cases that were dealt with in the court. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah, so uh, for, for the avoidance of doubt, I think, is Mr Isbell's usual phrase. 
Sorry, Chair. K sorry, um, Councillor Mansell. Mm. Councillor Matheson had two, two parts to his question. I think my, my colleague, the Chief, wishes to address when did the five-year housing land supply change? So, Chairman, the land supply we don't monitor on a day-to-day -day basis, and this is understood and agreed to be done through the annual monitoring report. Um, we were last at committee in September 2020 with this. The monitoring report for 2019-2020 was published in October 2020. I don't have the specific date when it was published. At that time, the land supply was 7.67 years. And the following year, 2020-2021, uh, was published in December 2021 and I'm just looking at the document now to give you the position as it was then um, and not doing very well but if I can come back to you I'll do that but literally for 2020 uh, the land supply position was set out in the annual monitoring report which post dated the hearing of the committee and it wasn't as sizeable as it is now. Thank you Chairman. Uh, 7.67, I think, was, was what was in, in October 2020 was the position that we reported Good. as available yeah. sites. But that would have been after the meeting. So at the time, I haven't been able to get the figure for the previous year. Remember, this is a 2019 application. So what I'd hoped to do in my report was report the previous figure. Which was less than five. I believe it was. Yeah, well, I believe it was less than 7.68. Whether or not it was below 5 or it was close, I haven't yeah. been able to ascertain. Yeah, I think that's... Chairman, with your agreement, if I can dig that out and come back in due course, I'm just going through the papers. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've got um, um, a couple of questions about the um, pedestrian cycle access but uh, the other question I've got is I'm a little bit intrigued by what you said about the um, the surgery uh, because surely people from from Thurston are more likely to go to Morton Hall or Ixworth than Debenham I'm intrigued by the Debenham bit uh, on the um, uh, pedestrian cycle access um, can you t inform me if there is any um, uh, connection from the in within inside the development, uh, well, at, well, inside the development, onto the footpath that runs along the southern edge of the development site? There is a public footpath that backs onto the existing housing there, and the bit of pavement or cycle path or whatever it is that the developer is proposing on the south side of the access point and you've got a pedestrian crossing to the side where the school is and all, all the rest of it, does that bit of uh, bike path actually link with the exit from the footpath onto that road? That's my first point about the um, footpath pedestrian thing. Um, and the uh, tiger crossings on, on the um, Norton Road, Vicksworth Road, um, uh, end there, that crossroads, uh, is there any access from the Norton Road direction where the new primary school is? If you're coming out of the old primary, the new primary school, can you access that new Tiger Crossing? Because it looked like it went straight into the housing estate, not the Norton Road bit. Um, and on your diagram of the proposed skate park, um, maybe I missed the cursor because I wasn't aware I had to look with eyes at the back of my head. Um, there was a, a distance marker of 81 metres to the corner, and I couldn't quite work out what relevance that had because it didn't look like it went anywhere near the skate pods or whatever they were called. Sorry if that's all a bit garbled. Thank you. Sorry. Obviously, we've, we've got the primary school to the east. As part of the Lawrence Home Scheme, there would be 
connections across their frontage, which would then link to the, f the cycle connections that have been provided by Linden Homes, for which there's a crossing over Norton Road. There's potentially another crossing this side of that, those sites here. But as it stands, you would still have to cross from this side to this side. So this scheme does not include extending footways on the north side or providing any crossing point here. What, so what I meant was, if you were coming, I, I, and I realise it's nothing to do with Norton Road, but it's to do with the Tiger Crossing. If you were coming out of Norton Road, how would you get to the Tiger Crossing? Is that pavement, uh, or, or do you have to actually just, you know, if you're crossing to get to the yeah. school, from the, fr to the high school, from yeah. the primary school direction, yeah. are you expected to go around the road onto no. the Tiger Crossing, or is there actually a link? These, these dotted lines are existing links. So what we are doing is connecting with the Tiger Crossing existing links at that point and that point. And just as an aside, further improvements would be delivered by the Lawrence, it's off of that screen, Lawrence Homes as the Linden Homes have already provided. But at some point you would still need, and I believe it's part of the Thurston Five, would be a crossing somewhere along here so that you could get from the north side to the south side. This scheme would not provide that crossing. Uh, in terms of skate park, sorry, this is a bit like when you have to tap your head and rub your stomach, you've got to concentrate. Yeah. You're quite right insofar as this has no relevance to the distance from the skate dots to residential. That's just showing you the maximum depth at that corner. However, this is where the, currently the attenuation basin is proposed, but were for some reason you to take the skate dots around the back of that, then that may be, may be relevant. But it really it's just highlighting the depth of this and it is a significant piece of open, open space. So there was, there was also a question about the footpath on the southern side of the um, development. Is there a link to the new bit of pavement and are there any links yep. within the development? If we go back to the slide with the... Yep. So this, this section in here is where the footpath runs at the, at the moment, and I'll go to a different slide that shows that. So this is actually taken from the estate road, so that part is within the road, but as you say, the footpath comes out at this point and would be connected by this crossing. There isn't a section in here, although that is shown. So we could actually get the three metre section to go up to the site boundary, which would actually then connect to that, that path. I, I see the point you're making, Council, and it's a good one. That ought to be green as well, in order so they can pick up. Uh, were members minded to suggest that they would have continued to grant planning permission, that would have been something we could have either added to the 106 or secured by condition. And is your Debenham surgery the right one? There, I saw heads moving. I, I defer to local knowledge. At the time, when I researched it, the answer was you have to go to Woolpit or, or Chair, yeah, yeah. yeah, if I could help, Chair. Yeah, page 99 of our papers. I, I was on the committee when we did this before, and I remembered there was something there. And I, it is, it's on page 99, and the discussion there about capacity, etc., looks at Mount Farm, which is presumably that's the Berry one, isn't it? And, and Ixworth um, surgeries. Strangely, it doesn't actually mention Woolpit, but um, uh, certainly um, Debenham's a long way off, off, the, um, off the beaten track. And, but it, there is some referencing there on page 99, so that's, uh, we did deal with that before. There was actually one other thing that I'd made a note of on my scrappy piece of paper. Um, you talked about extensive landscaping on all four sides of the development. 
and yet the very, the very beginning of your presentation, you talked about the visibility splay cutting across a bit of open space. Now on the plans, it looks like there are some bushes there. So um, can you just confirm if there are actually going to be any planting there, where that has to be kept completely bare for visibility on the, on the side of the road? of scrubby hedgerow at the point of access that would be lost within this section there is very little that little cluster may also have to to go to accommodate the visibility splay but in, in place of the loss of that piece uh, that tree there and this little cluster this entire belt in here between the green and the yellow lines would actually be dense planting, new planting. So in the same way as we get a 20 metre additional buffer down this side, along that edge, and we get all of this open space, we also get that dense buffer along here. Our view at the time was that actually reinforces the character of Ixworth Road better than uh, the position at the moment where most of the former hedgerow over, the t over time has been grubbed up. No. <laughs> um, thank you, Chair. Um, thanks for the presentation, Vince. Um, just in the recommendation on page 41, um, you don't mention the neighbourhood plan at all as, a, um, as part of that um, recommendation for refusal. Um, is that because, because obviously their policy one is about settlement boundary, is that because of the word focused or is my first question and secondly whether it is or it isn't to do that should should the the fact that there is a neighborhood plan and um, what the neighbor plans trying to do be included as in part of the refusal thank you you are right councillor eben the recommendation has not cited the neighborhood plan on the basis you're quite right that the policy one suggests that development should be focused within the settlement boundary and the outcome from the court cases was that uh, the judges determined that focused does not mean development outside of the settlement boundary should be refused focused allows development outside of the settlement boundary what the co court of appeal did say was that refusal based on an application being contrary to the council's adopted development plan, i.e. development in the countryside, is a reasonable and appropriate approach. So as officers, what we are suggesting is that we, and you said focus, we, we direct our attention to our adopted development plan, because this is quite clearly not allocated in that, and it is clearly technically countryside. And therefore, logically, what the judges said about the case holds true for this, this site. Okay, now that makes sense. Um, can I just come back that, um, just to check that there aren't, I'm assuming therefore there aren't any other policies within the neighbourhood plan that would um, support that refusal, as it were, that would be... Um, that you might, one might want to, if one was recommending um, refusal, one, one might want to strengthen that recommendation. But, uh, so I'm just, you know, not to chuck kitchen sink in as it were, but just if there is anything, just to reassure us that that's what we've got is the kind of optimum, if you see what I mean. Chairman, I mean, we've, come to you with a recommendation which we believe is defensible and credible on a review of the considerations. We've taken legal advice on the papers before you as to the accuracy of that relative to the outcome of the court case and the considerations that have changed. I think our original application of the neighbourhood plan policies remains as we set out in the original report. The materiality of change is the land supply question and 
that's described by the examination inspectors. So our view about the application of the interpretation uh, of the neighbourhood plan is as you have in the papers and we don't look into add anything else. I think from our point of view, this is a cogent analysis of the planning circumstance. Gladman clearly have a position. They have followed that through to complete a section 106 and all by the shouting, that would have been an issued decision. Um, and I think from our point of view, we have a case which they will doubtless argue, but this is defensible uh, and credible. Thanks, that's very helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, we've identified improvements to road junctions, the uh, Tiger Crossing, the Toucan Crossing, and the contribution to um, at Banbury's, at the Banbury Arms, and also funding towards improving safety at the railway station. Um, I think one question, I, obviously if this development is refused, then we'll lose that contribution. Do other develop, are other developments that are under construction in Thurston making a contribution to these imp safety improvements? And would it still be possible for these improvements to carry on? A very good question, Councillor. I'm sure we'll hear from the Parish Council. But at the moment, we are in dialogue with the Parish Council and our county colleagues as to how the Thurston Five highway monies, because there was a considerable contribution towards highway improvements, has been spent in Thurston in terms of improvements. Um, the, I'm just thinking, in and of themselves, the 106 that relates to the Thurston Five, I believe, does not particularly identify improvements, specific improvements to the station. Now, I think what Thurston Parish Council are trying to get to the bottom of is how much money of the, of the original sum is left and what could that be used for in terms of what you see on the screen today in terms of improvements to that junction, Heath Road, Barton Road, potentially could be funded from other sources if you didn't give planning permission for this scheme. But how much of it could be funded from, let's say, the Thurston Five pot? It's not clear how much of that is left. Anecdotally, I'm told by county colleagues that there is very little left and it certainly wouldn't fund um, the Tiger Crossing, for example. Now, I think um, our friends from the Parish Council are sceptical as to whether that is, is true. I can only say what I've been told, mm. and it is only hearsay. I, I'm sure that the Parish Council and ourselves are waiting for some sort of evidence from the county that's audited to show how that money has been spent. So I think the long answer to your question, Councillor, was Yes, other schemes could fund those. It's unclear whether there is money in the pot at the moment to fund them. Um, whether or not still could be used or the county funds could be used, we don't know. All I can say is that Gladman have ensured through the 106 that the schemes that they've committed to can be funded and are, in that sense, guaranteed. If development was implemented, those improvements could be provided because the money is included in that 106. Thank you. Sorry, can I just, uh, Jeff? Sorry, Councillor, you're the chief. You tell me. I just wanted to add one point. The Highway Authority's comments are predicated on, I no objection to the scheme, are predicated on the Baton Road improvements, so Fishwick Corner and others, all being in place before development on this site starts. Because we have the 106 at Baton Road, were you minded to grant planning permission for this scheme, we'd have to have a condition that ensured that development didn't start ahead of the Fishwick Corner Works, because this scheme benefits in terms of highway capacity from those works south of the railway bridge. But as we're in the position of recommending refusal, we don't have to deal with that. No, that's the traffic lights. So. Yes. Thank you.
Uh, Chairman, if I can just come back, I think it was Councillor Matheson raised a question about when the land supply changed. Yes. So uh, the position statement, the housing land supply position statement uh, issued in September 2019 said the council had a land supply of 5.66 years. The housing land supply statement issued in October 2020 and I don't know when, said the land supply was 7.67 years, and the housing land supply statement for uh, the following year, 2021, which was issued in February 22, <coughs> stated that the land supply for that was uh, 9.54 years. So you can see a clear trajectory there of increasing supply. But obviously, at the time that we reported to you in September 2020, the information we had, because our consultants had not reported back to us uh, in final form, was that the land supply was 5.66 years. I mean, clearly, it would be foolish to think that permissions had not been granted since September 2019, but we did not have precise calculation as to the effect that it had on the land supply. One, 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 other, one other, other little point. I just, I'm, I'm very conscious we need to be absolutely, absolutely clear and correct in every word we say. When, when officers were talking about the, the um, draft JLP, which I think probably is the submission draft of the JLP, um, you spoke about JLP allocation. I think we would have to say that was a proposed allocation at that time. So um, that just for absolute clarity, thank you. I, could, I would concur. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, sorry, uh, this is a question that follows on from the response we got from Councillor Warboy's um, queries um, about the road improvements. Um, you said that the should this get permission, it was predicated on the um, improvements tied in with the Baton Road development to be in place. Um, what about the improvements at the Bunbury Arms crossing? Um, because you mentioned something about this would be an enhanced... Should this get permission, there was some, to be some enhanced, some, some sort of special thing going on at the Bunbury Arms junction. Um, but there's no, is there a time constraint on that? Because of course that most of the, as I understood the Thurston Five were meant to be providing money to do something with the Bunbury Arms Junction. And as to my knowledge, last time I was there, it looked the same as normal. So I'm assuming that all those houses have been built and a lot of them are occupied in Thurston now. Um, is there a time by which that Bunbury Arms needs to have something done by? Uh, and is that going to be linked into this at all in any way? If members were minded to indicate that they would approve this application, that is something we would have to look into and report back on. Um, in the same uh, way that we're waiting for information as to what the Thurston Five monies has funded, we also are looking to see how much of the Bunbury Arms improvements has already been allocated from that, that pot. But you're quite right. If we're minded to grant permission, then we would need to ensure that not just the works I've described, but also the Bunbury Arms is also linked to a commencement on this site. Because just as the Gladman site benefits from the Baton Road improvements, it also benefits from the Bunbury Arms improvements. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for the report. Uh, the, I just want to explore the traffic counts, because I, I remember the previous meeting where we were relying on software to be able to get the traffic flows to a safe position. But that was obviously based on data several years ago. When was the latest traffic? Uh, how old is the traffic data we are basing this current decision on? This, the report 
reflects the position two and a half years ago. We have not, first part, we have not had an updated um, traffic assessment. At the time, that assessment would have for, taken into account a five-year uh, growth period of, of traffic. It would have reflected permissions that had been granted, and I believe it, on this one, yes, it also would have um, factored in the Baton decision. That's why they offered the money for the mover software in order to get additional capacity. So there hasn't been an updated traffic assessment since you last considered this in September, but the, the information we received at the time would have been uh, forecasting five years ahead. Okay. So, so if we were to do the assessment again, we'd know if the forecast was correct, wouldn't we? It may or may not come up with a different answer, yeah. yes. Um, yes, I mean, this is a bit hypothetical as well. While we're on the sort of uh, subject of, uh, of perhaps sort of looking for further information, um, I'm, I'm assuming here that the wastewater treatment at Thurston Water Recycling Centre is part of Anglia Water, or is it independent of Anglia Water? I do not know the answer to that. I would have to check. Uh, because as, as many things we've moved on with traffic and or whatever, we've also moved on with what we, the sort of information we were requiring from Anglia Water um, to go beyond about a sort of blanket statement saying they have available capacity, that we were looking for um, additional information, if you like, is what that meant. So would that be? Having said I do not know the answer, I'm going to correct myself insofar as, in terms of the Baton <coughs> Road Reserved Matters submission, which is due to come to uh, Committee A in, on the 15th of March, we did get a, an updated response from Anglian Water in, I believe it's February, saying that they had no objection to that, that scheme, which presupposes there is capacity to accommodate whether or not something has happened in the intervening two and a half years as the other sites have, have been built out, whether they've taken um, steps to enhance their capacity. But in terms of the Baton Road scheme, <coughs> as of February, they have no objection. Mm -hmm. now move on to the public speakers and I'd like to call the Parish Council representative Julian West and I believe Mrs Waples you're there for questions I believe okay uh, Mr West you have three minutes thank you <clears throat> over the past four years and for at least the next five years Thurston will be undergoing an unprecedented level of development two of the first and five developments are nearing completion and following the successful appeal relating to the Bloor application a further 210 properties are to be built within the village over the next few years, plus the much needed care home provision of 54 residences. Additionally, since 2017, the village expansion has included nine properties on Barrels Road, nine flats at the Granary, and a possible further 97 flats to be built. In total, Thurston currently has planning permissions in place for over 1,250 new homes. Despite this level of development, mitigation for these new homes currently extends to just the new primary school, which as a result of the Bloor development will already be requiring an extension, and some minimal highways and junction improvements. No additional commercial, retail, health or community space or facilities have been provided to Thurston outside of the mandatory green space and play area provision for each site. No solution has been provided to solve the safety issue on the railway station crossing, despite the developers being instructed to work on the issue as part of their planning approvals. Due to its glacial progress to date, the Parish Council has lost any confidence in network rail addressing this situation in the foreseeable future. The application proposes nothing in addition in terms of mitigation for the increased volume of traffic and pressure on the road network created by proposed new homes. 
The required improvements to the Bunbury Arms Junction on the A143 still appear to be completely pie in the sky, with no evidence being produced of any progress to date. Contrary to the report by the uh, officer, Thurston is not well served by buses. Ixworth Road, which services the proposed development, is a narrow country road in very poor condition with a number of bends and restricted views on oncoming traffic. Suffolk highways have made reference to the safety issues with poor sight lines and visibility displays on the road in other planning applications, notably the Cedars Close and for the Thurston Community College. Any additional exits onto this carriageway will only add to the existing safety issues, whilst the increased traffic will impact further on the other principal junctions within the village. All of the developments have a negative impact on traffic flows and therefore air quality and the achievement of measures to support the Council's declaration of a climate emergency. The latest officer report notes that the Council currently has a 10.88 year land supply. There is no longer a draft allocation of development sites within the emerging JLP and therefore there is no de demonstrable need for this development to go ahead. Thurston Parish urges the committee to reject this application today. Should this application be approved, Thurston will end up with yet another massive development that nobody wants, is no longer required to meet the development targets, and will not have the necessary, necessary infrastructure improvements to support it. Thank you. Thank you Mr. West. Do we have questions, please, for the parish members? No questions at all? Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, right. Ward members, Councillor Davis and Councillor Richardson. So, Councillor Davis, if you would like to go first, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, rather than going through a speech, what I'd like to do is firstly say that I fully support Mr. Wett's comments about our community's reaction to this application. I thank our officers for all the work they've done in. Uh, looking again at uh, the housing supply and coming to the conclusion that uh, they recommend a refusal, which I enthusiastically support. Um, I was puzzled, if not possibly appalled, by a comment that the uh, County Council Highways has already spent the over £900,000 which the five um, existing developers have contributed to the S106s. We do have some uh, crossing points outside the new primary school, but outside of that, there's been zip in the way of highway improvements. And certainly initial discussions with highways indicated that there would be some flexibility in reorientating the funds that have been paid to Suffolk County Council to improve the crossing points outside the community college. Um, in terms of the network rail 30 grand for feasibility studies, as I'm sure we're all acutely aware, we've contributed uh, 100,000 of our SIL money for the feasibility study, so we just await the arrival of network rail. Uh, I think that'll about do me for now. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Davis. Councillor Richardson, please. Lovely. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I will be brief as I agree with uh, much of what's been said already, similar to Councillor Davies. Um, as one of the, uh, well, the other ward member, um, I'd like to endorse the officer's recommendation uh, for refusal uh, and would thank them uh, for reviewing and revisiting uh, this application in light of the changes outlined uh, in the report. Um, members will be aware, as has already been referenced, there's been a significant amount of development uh, in Thurston since the first major planning application was approved at appeal uh, in October 2017. So we are some, some way down this journey, and I think we've already seen the accumulative impact of the developments that are going up in Thurston. You've heard that two are nearing completion already. Um, obviously, this site, as you've heard, is, is outside of the settlement boundary. It is in the open countryside and is not allocated for growth, um, or isn't proposed as an allocation for growth, I should say. Um, and all of those, obviously, are material considerations. Uh, one thing I will just highlight um, off the back of the presentation is that for the uh, skateboarding um, proposals, those have been superseded now by um, a current scheme at a different site, uh, which although it's, it's far from being completed, is relatively advanced. Um, so that benefit associated with this application is no longer um, relevant, I would argue. Um, and so for those reasons, um, 
as you've heard from the officer's uh, presentation, the relative benefit versus the relative harm, um, now that the situation has changed after three years, um, I would ask uh, members to uh, refuse the application or to provide the putative reason for refusal um, in the papers uh, if indeed this application is appealed, which I believe it will be. Um, I must just say on a final note that it is rather disappointing um, that the uh, applicants themselves are absent. Uh, I think it's probably worth putting on record the fact that engagement both with and from Gladman has been minimal, um, to say the least. Um, so I, I, I think that's, that's especially disappointing. Um, but I'll leave it there because I, I don't want to repeat uh, what's already been said. Um, so thank you very much, Chair. Happy to take any questions if there are any, but I must apologise in advance. I'm not able to stay for the debate. Um, but I'm happy to, to answer any questions if, if members do have any. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Richardson. Do we have any questions, please, to the ward members? Councillor Warboyce, please. Uh, I'm not sure whether the ward members are uh, going to answer this. No, it might have to go back to the post council if that's. Um, have Suffolk County. Oh, it's apparently quite clear. I think um, the expression is zip in the way of highway improvements. Uh, uh, have the Suffolk Highways been approached with regard to some sort of statement as to how the substantial funds they've already received been spent and how much has been left? I'm just remain sorry. Thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Warboys. I think the, uh, the honest answer is yes, an approach has been made, but a full uh, and detailed answer has not been forthcoming as yet. Thank you. Do we have any further questions for the ward members? No? Matheson. Can we have a council break, Chair? Yes, that's fine. We'll, have, we'll break for five minutes. Thanks.
I'll now open up the uh, application for debate. Who would like to kick off, please? Councillor. Mayor, yeah. So it's getting late. Isn't it? Four years. There we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously made a big impression. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, whilst no decision is, is straightforward, this one isn't straightforward, but I think I find that actually the material changes are highly significant. The allocation, the proposed allocation, is not now in the JLP, and our land supply would allow us to deliver everything that we need to deliver by 2036. So we do not need these houses. So are the benefits so high that that outweighs that decision? And to my mind, no. I think the officer's report um, was a balanced, hit the nail on the head, and I'm very happy to support that recommendation and propose um, that we refuse planning permission. Yeah, happy to second that, Chair. Uh, uh, but I'll say that uh, uh, and qualify that. I, I would have actually liked to have seen an up-to-date highways assessment here because if the actuality of the traffic movements at Bunbury Arms is greater than the forecast, it would mean that the software mitigation proposed wouldn't mitigate. But we don't know that because we haven't got an up-to-date traffic assessment. I would have personally liked to have seen that, but I'm still happy to second uh, the refusal, uh, however. Uh, just to say, uh, but going through the years of, of, of needing in excess of five-year land supply, that, that seven years, nine years, and ten years plus are all above five. So, and I understand why ten years plus is significantly more than five. Uh, but, but even when we originally were visiting this, we had in excess of five years as, as a land supply. Having said that, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't preclude me from seconding what is quite a comprehensive report, uh, despite my small misgivings, uh, and, and happy to second this, and I'll be voting with the officer recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Um, listening to what Councillor Stringer was saying, and accepting that we're in a situation where this is likely to go to appeal, clearly this will be put before another decision maker. One could, if one chose, and this is up to the proposer and second of the motion, add an informative decision to invite the inspector to give serious consideration to a review of that issue. Albeit we're not necessarily raising it as a matter of refusal here, but to express that this is something which public confidence in the appeal process will be gained by going over that matter. So um, I, I would say that if the proposer and seconder wish to, an informative to invite the inspector to review that matter in order that there is public confidence in their decision would be something we could add to the decision uh, that we would make. Yeah, happy. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, I, I, I voted against this originally, so I'm, I'm not, not going to change my opinion clearly. And um, yeah, I think the uh, one of the reasons that I didn't uh, support it then was was doubts about the the ability of, of a sort of fairly untried etc. software to um, mitigate what was undoubtedly going to be an awful lot of extra traffic. I think. Um, officers might correct me, but I think we must have taken this decision then, um, uh, soon after the, the, the Thurston Five, which I, I was not party to, in fact, uh, as a member of the committee. Um, and, and so that, that really, particularly the traffic weighed in addition to the, to the, the doubts about need and, and um, I don't really quite understand how the appeal court came to the decision that it did about what focus meant. This is 20% of, um, of the of the numbers in in the neighbourhood plan, and I would have thought focus would have led to a smaller number than 20% being outside the neighbourhood plan. So that's um, that's just another 
sense of, of that isn't going to affect our decision today actually so uh, actually support the recommendation and um, yeah thank you chair um, I agree with my um, colleague councillor mayor in terms of that you know this it's a complex um, issues with this development particularly in the context of, of Thurston and what's been already um, approved there um, but I'm pleased to see that this is a refusal and I feel um, satisfied that the um, arguments from the officers and having had got legal advice and so on on, on that um, recommendation and I think that in this instance I think we should be supporting the community of Thurston um, particularly in um, helping them to gain benefits and infrastructure benefits from from the developments that are taking place there and and also supporting um, them in the fact that there is no need for this development given the amount of um, housing development we've got and the land supply that we've got of 10.88 years so I will be supporting the officer recommendation thank you chair uh, thank you, Chair. I, I, I too will be uh, fully supporting the current um, uh, proposal that we've got on the table. Um, and uh, similarly to um, Councillor Matheson, um, I too voted against this development last time. I also get, voted against the vast majority of the Thurston Five on the basis that I wouldn't be party to any, any decision that uh, put jeopardy onto the railway station. And I am, I think it is, I think we're in a sad and sorry state that we are um, over five years on from that Thurston Five decision um, with the Bunbury Arm, the promise of the improvement of the Bunbury Arms Junction, uh, the promise of something that would be done about the railway station, and, and as yet a vast number of those houses in Thurston are now occupied, and we're nowhere, nowhere near, uh, we haven't moved any further forward on either of those issues. Um, so uh, adding another 210 houses into the mix, uh, and of course that's on top of the Baton Road development, uh, is only going to make things worse. So I, I fully support the refusal, uh, and, I, and I'm, I thank the officers for doing the work to get the um, grounds for refusal um, strong enough to hold up at, at the, any, appeal, any future appeal. So I will be voting for the current um, recommendation for refusal. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, like, I think I'd like to thank the um, planning officer for taking us through the uh, material changes and making it quite clear uh, how that has made it possible for us to uh, refuse this application. I think from Mr. Isabel's uh, remarks, I think it opens the, the uh, scope for, you know, just bringing to the surface that um, Suffolk highways and, and network rail have been part of the discussions about these developments and they have um, accepted that there's the need for improvements in safety in these sites and, they've, and consequently they've accepted they have a duty of care towards the increased traffic at these sites as a result of the extra developments. And as I said, I think from what Mr. Isbell's comments were that this will be taken to the planning inspectorate and they will be able to comment on, on that. Um, they have received substantial amounts. Uh, the funds may have disappeared. And as we all know, costs have increased over the last five years. So it's making it extremely unlikely that we're going to be able to catch up with the increased costs without further development. And that's an invidious <laughs> position for us to find ourselves as a development, as a referral committee. So I will be supporting the planning officer's recommendations, um, but I do think Suffolk Highways have, have sort of neglected to carry this forward. Sorry, a question, and um, this is not meant as a criticism in any way, but given that this may go to um, an appeal, I'm slightly concerned by a comment made by Councillor Matheson in that he said, I voted against this before and clearly I'm not going to change my mind. Um, would, it, would it be better, um, I probably can't tell you, 
Is, is that a sense? Can we say that? Is that going to damage our decision? May I, yeah, it's not, I don't think it's a legally wrong thing to say. I mean, actually, that there is case law from the High Court Court of Appeal saying consistency in public decision making is, is, is an important principle, and that sometimes if you are um, going to change your mind from an earlier decision, you need to explain why. But that's talking about the council collectively rather than an individual member who is entitled to think again and say, well, I thought that three years ago, but I now think something different, having had further reflection. But it's, it doesn't unduly worry me as your legal advisor. Yeah, perhaps um, what I should have said was that the, the reasons that I refused it then have been strengthened by subsequent change, material considerations changing. They've only changed to make it more certain that I would vote against. Is that right? Thank you very much. I won't repeat the um, reasons why we're talking about refusing this, but I think they're good, strong reasons for appeal. But um, I just wanted to say that it's, it's with pleasure that I make this decision because I've been on planning committees before we had this land supply and that weight of that need when deciding a, an application, I have not enjoyed that one bit, having a, a real high weight um, on the need. And um, to come out of that, although there has been a lot of development done and there's been a big sacrifice um, in Thurston for the um, land supply, um, to come out of that is a really, is a really good thing for me. But um, yeah, fully support this. This is, a, um, this is a good decision. I think it's strong for appeal. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I agree with what colleagues have said. Um, uh, I, I don't actually recall whether I was involved in the previous decision. I can't, certainly can't remember how I voted, but um, certainly we've had a very, very clear uh, kind of a presentation, a very detailed one, um, and, and I'm, I'm confident in the, uh, the, the reasons which are given for refusal. It, it does seem to me um, faintly ridiculous that we cannot seem to get Network Rail to pull their finger out and do this uh, work uh, to um, to look at the station and see what can be done. We've we've put aside a hundred thousand pounds. They didn't use it, and we've had to put it aside again for them. Um, so, if, if anything, uh, you know, if if anyone in the public domain is watching this, if there's any way we can get pressure on uh, Network Rail, it'd be wonderful to see some movement on that. We had a very near accident uh, at that station last year. Uh, I would hate to see someone injured because um, progress had not been made there. Um, so um, I'm happily uh, going to vote for the officer's recommendation on this occasion. Thank you. Just as a point of information, Chairman, I was in a conversation this morning with um, Christine Thurlow uh, and colleagues regarding the situation with rail and there's 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 still a will and a conversation going on about providing infrastructure i think we all regret the slowness with which that conversation is taking place but it is not forgotten it is not gone um, but network rail are a curious organization to deal with great no okay then i, I will sort of make my comments uh, i'd like to thank uh, vincent for his uh, very detailed report Thank you for that. I fully agree with the comments made by my fellow members here and also the Parish Council, and I too will be supporting the recommendation to, of refusal for this application. Thank you. Um, Mr Isbo, did you wish to make any comment before we go to the vote at all? Uh, the Chairman, the, uh, the only comment I'd make is that the proposal before you is one for a uh, reason for refusal, or a putative reason for refusal, if by the time officers get to issue the decision, the appeal has been formalised and lodged, which is not impossible, uh, and therefore, um, as long as the authority for whatever is decided here today allows for both actions, then we can take that forward. Uh, and uh, Claire has the, the text around it informative, and just for clarity, I'll read that to you. I'd suggest, if the proposer and second are happy with that, that the council notes the interest and concern locally regarding the mitigation of highway issues and the interest 
uh, of, and in the interests of public confidence, invites the Secretary of State's inspector to ensure, to ensure that this aspect is given proper review in reaching their decision at the forthcoming appeal. Now, I mean, the appeal might not get heard, but I think the balance of probability is that there will be an appeal and this, this will take place. You're right, Councillor Matthews. Is that, is that only the, the road side of things that, that your, your uh, informative's talking about? Uh, I've said highways issues, so I've left it open, but I think clearly from our perspective, right. we have advice technically which is in the papers. I think what gives public confidence is for the inspector appointed to uh, ensure that is given sufficient review that the community feels that's been looked at. Um, and clearly the parish may have a position on that that they will wish to argue. Thank you very much. I now ask the governor's officer to conduct the electronic vote, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Members, that vote is now in progress. Councillor Struna, can I take your vote, please? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, Chair, that is nine votes for refusal. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today, and I will now formally close the meeting at 16.20. Thank you very much.